this side's a little bit heavier. So this is part five of the two-stroke triple yard cart. Let's get back to working on this thing. I've been working on the Ninja for three weeks now. Right now, I'm in, I'm in the middle of part four. I'm painting that thing. So uh, while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, uh, let's get back to working on this. Now, what we need to do in this video is we need to install the radiator, gas tank. Uh, I also want to add some type of cover for the belt. And then we need to do, uh, well, pedals and then... Uh, other stuff here and there. First thing is let's start working on the radiator. I hope this is big enough. Hopefully it's big enough. I am going to be trying to put a radiator fan behind it because this engine does produce a little bit of electricity. Enough to run a light, so hopefully it's enough to run just a little fan. We are going to have to modify this to get it to, uh, to work, but it does fit right about here. And I will be adding some type of metal bar right here to protect the corner right there and uh, to modify this thing we need to move the inlet over to here we need to move the outlet over to here and we need to make the inlet and the outlet just a little bit bigger on this because they're bigger on the engine so we need to make a match then we need to uh, cut off all these mounts that we don't need weld on new mounts so therefore we can mount it to the frame as well as we need to weld on a cap on the top so therefore we can uh, fill this thing up So I'm going to be the first one to tell you that uh, my aluminum welding definitely, definitely is not great. You know, these welds may hold pressure, but they definitely don't look pretty. Uh, you know, these, these are a little bit easier to weld, but still they just look kind of horrid. You can definitely tell the difference between the ones from the factory and mine. So anyway, these, uh, I, I just need a little bit more practice with aluminum welding and because I have a hard time getting it to close and getting it to actually work with what I want to do. The arc is just going all over the place and I just, I need a little bit more practice. So anyway, uh, next thing we need to do is we need to weld a cap on the top of this radiator so therefore we can vent all the air out of the coolant system to get it to work properly. So I was originally going to just take a motorcycle radiator cap 
off of an old motorcycle radiator and just weld it on here. But then I realized that uh, the, the cap on the engine is rated for a much higher pressure rating than any motorcycle radiator cap. So basically we need to weld a cap on here that cannot vent pressure. We need a, we need a cap like this, that, we, that way we can take it off and vent all the air out of it and then uh, put it back on and it can hold pressure. Unfortunately, this one's on the bottom and we need, we need one on the top. Now, I could buy a cap like this. These are rel relatively, uh, relatively cheap on the internet, but I don't really feel like waiting for shipping, so let's see if we can make one.
So the radiator is finished. It's assembled on here. It's not completely done. We still need to add some type of protection uh, on the bottom from debris or rocks or sticks from hitting and damaging this thing, but we'll do that later. Uh, right now, let's start working on building the gas tank. All right, for the gas tank, uh, I have decided to not delete the oil injection and oil pump on this thing, just because the engine is designed to run with it. I don't want to modify anything, and let's just leave it alone. Let's leave this thing how it's how it's designed. So, what we need to do is we need to figure out a place to put an oil tank on this thing. Now, I think this oil injection, oil pump, I think it has a pump in there, but I'm not sure how big it is and I'm not sure how strong the pump is, so I don't want to put the oil tank like way up there and have this thing struggling to get oil into the system, so I want to put the oil tank as close to this as possible. So I think the only place for it is like right here somewhere. Uh, it's a little close to the clutch, but I'm going to be putting some type of cover over the clutch anyway, so it should protect the tank from any flying debris or anything. So. I think right here is the perfect place for the oil tank. Now for the gas tank, this does have a pulse pump on here, so that means we can pretty much put the gas tank wherever we want, as long as it's not way over there or too low from the system. So now, I think the perfect place for a gas tank is next to the seat on the other side of the radiator. I think that's a perfect place to have a decent sized gas tank. So the oil tank is tacked together. This thing is way bigger than what we need it to be. But my thought is I'd rather have it bigger so therefore we have to fill this up less. That's my thought process on this. Uh, this right here is for this. This is an oil level sensor that came off the original oil tank off the snowmobile. And then I wanted to make sure that we can install it onto the new, the new oil tank. and. Uh, just to make sure this will let us know if we are low on oil. So you may notice that there is no gas cap on here. Uh, I forgot to order them for this project, so I had to order them today. And uh, they'll hopefully get here tomorrow, possibly the next day. 
And I don't want to weld this whole thing together until installing the cap, just so I can make sure that it, it fits, and uh, then we can then we can figure out mounting, and then we figure out then we weld this entire thing together. So while we're waiting for the gas caps to get here for the oil tank as well as the gas tank, let's uh, let's start building the gas tank. This thing definitely, definitely turned into a weird shape, very complicated, but uh, this thing, it does fit perfectly right in here, just like that, it fits just like that. So gas cap is going to be going right here. Now, we're still waiting for the gas caps to get here. Amazon said they were going to get here today, but now, they, now they're saying they're going to get here tomorrow. And I don't really want to continue with this thing until the gas cap is installed, the bung is installed, and then we can do this one, and then finish this and weld it all together. So, while we're waiting for those uh, gas caps to get here, I guess let's, let's start working on uh, building some type of protection for the radiator on the other side.
Okay, so added some screen mesh to the bottom of this to protect the radiator from any like rocks or sticks getting kicked up and uh, potentially damaging the bottom of it. Because this thing is really low to the ground and uh, I don't want anything, you know, getting kicked up and damaging the bottom of this. Now, we may have some issues with the front tire kicking up dirt and, land and dirt landing on the front of this. I did think about trying to like add more screen mesh to right here to try and block that, but I think that's going to create just more issues and it's going to create uh, issues with airflow, not allowing air to get to this thing. So I think this is fine. This is enough protection for this thing, so I think let's just leave it how it is. Alright, all the gas caps that I ordered finally got here. I got a couple of them just so we'd have a selection to choose from for which ones to eat. I bought different sizes and uh, also bought, I bought a uh, half inch weld in bungs and the listing said it was a quantity of one so I bought four of them just so I'd have backup and no, it's a quantity of two. So now I have eight of them. So now I have a lot of backup. So we have a choice of different sizes we can use. Obviously the big one's gonna go on the gas tank and uh, I think either one, either this one or this one is going to go on the uh, oil tank. So the gas tank is fully welded together. I actually uh, took my time this time and actually cleaned the material before welding and that really helped out a lot with some of the contamination issues I've been having with welding aluminum. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to mount this into the frame right about here. Now I don't want to just weld on tabs and bolt this to the frame. Because this thing has no suspension and aluminum is sensitive to vibrations and moving and whatever, I'm going to figure out a different way to mount this to the frame.
Okay, so this way, it's not bolted on the frame, it's merely just kind of resting in, a, in like its own little kind of holder, basically, and... Sorry. I used spacers to, uh, to space these evenly apart because I bought, uh, I bought thin rubber sheet, and I'll be putting that rubber sheet on the inside of these to, uh, to make it to where the gas tank is going to be resting on, uh, resting on rubber instead of just metal on metal. So, bought this sheet on Amazon, it's going to get here in a couple days, shipping kind of takes forever nowadays. Now, we do need to figure out a way to kind of clamp this thing down onto the frame because it is able to lift out, it's, it moves around a little bit, so we, we need to figure out a way to hold it down without bolting it down because that, that would kind of defeat the purpose of what I just did. So I'm, kind, I'm not really sure how we're going to do that. I'm kind of thinking like what if we just got like a really long hose clamp and just like hose clamped it down onto the frame like that, but that's a little janky. I, I, I don't really want to do that, so I don't know. We got to figure out a way to do that and then uh, do the same thing to the oil tank. Now, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to end this video here. Next video of this project, we'll be trying to figure out how to clamp this down on the frame. We will finish the oil tank, get that finalized, and then installed onto the frame. Then we can start working on pedals, as well as the enclosure for the CVT belt. Now, for the belt, originally I was thinking about just simply making like just an aluminum plate that just kind of goes over the belt just like that, but you know, th this thing is an off-road vehicle. We're probably going to be driving this thing through the mud, through puddles, and I don't want the belt getting wet and then start slipping and having issues with that. So now I'm thinking of making some type of enclosure for the belt, so therefore it can't get wet, but it does need to be ventilated so it doesn't the belt doesn't heat up and start slipping that way. So, and I also don't want to make it to where it's a giant chunk of aluminum just bolted on the frame because I don't want it, I don't want this thing just looking like a bunch of aluminum boxes bolted onto a frame. We've got a giant aluminum gas tank. We're going to have a giant cover for the clutch and then an aluminum uh, tank back here and then aluminum radiator on the other side. So we got to figure out a way to enclose this thing without making it a giant giant aluminum box. So that's going to be for next video of this project for now. I gotta end this video here. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video. So, uh, something I recently added to this lathe is I added this. This is basically just a cheap way of adding a DRO to this thing. And as I was hacksawing that part off, I wasn't really paying attention and kind of cut myself pretty badly on these really sharp parts. I've been meaning to cut these off, just haven't really done it yet, and I wasn't paying attention, and kind of cut myself pretty badly on them. Can this thing focus? Do you guys even want to see this? My bad if this is grossing you out. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, if I move it around, you can kind of see that flap of skin moving, so it cut me really badly like that. So that is just a loose flap of skin on this, and I'm 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 starting to feel like lightheaded, and I I'm, I gotta sit down. I'm like blacking out almost. So, oh my, oh I gotta sit down.